don't be afraid to show your personal side. Hi, I'm Joel Sweeney. About two weeks ago, I did a post on the power of telling a story. And I got some really great feedback on that particular post, uh, asking that I give an example. And interestingly enough, I actually did that last, the last post I made uh, a week ago, uh, where I talked about the power of knowing and shared a story to reinforce that particular message. And it was a personal story about some of the challenges that I had with a uh, taking on a 10 mile road race. And then the stages that occurred because I actually completed and that knowledge of knowing that I could do it carried me into many other uh, subsequent races and spilled over into other things as well. But I thought I'd follow up uh, with yet another example, a personal one again, uh, that I had suppressed. I had suppressed this story for many, many years. Uh, I think because I was somewhat embarrassed by it, and it's just funny how things change over time. But it speaks well to what's happening, I believe, with the whole uh, business of speaking today. Like the more we, t the more stories we tell, uh, the more compelling our message, and the more relevant the message. I think it, if we can share it with a story, and so for me, several years ago. Uh, this would be pre 9-11. And I guess this particular story is about, uh, you know, it might be, what were you thinking? Or that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Or that's the dumbest thing you've ever done. Uh, those kinds of things. Uh, but I used it in a workshop about a year and a half ago and it just popped into my head. It wasn't something that I had in my inventory or anything like that. Uh, but it popped into my head and I took the opportunity to share it with my audience uh, to reinforce the fact that uh, to you know we're just human, and because we're human, we'll do dumb things. We'll sometimes make mistakes, and I really wanted to reinforce that particular message. And this story came to mind, and this was pre 9/11, and back then I had a really <laughs> I don't know if it was a good reputation. It was I had a reputation. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I had a reputation for always showing up late at the airport. Uh, basically, uh, the airline stewardess would say, uh, okay, we can close the door now, Joel's on. That, you know, I traveled quite a bit back then, uh, air travel primarily. And so I got a reputation. St. John's Airport, just a small airport, wasn't very big, much bigger now. And a lot of people knew me and I knew them sort of thing. And so anyway, this one particular trip, I was going to Montreal and I was traveling uh, a little bit later than norm. I was really pushing the envelope this time and I decided that I needed to get my bags checked because I needed those for my meeting in Montreal. So I, I decided I was going to pull up to the departure area, leave the car running, go in, get my bags checked, get my boarding pass, get back out, park the car and then make a beeline for the gate to get on the plane. When I got to the ticket counter, the agent that was there who also knew me, uh, basically said, Joel, I'll make sure your bags get on the plane, but you need to get up there right now because they're getting ready to close the door. And with that, all thought of anything else went out of my head and I just made a beeline up to the gate to get on the plane. Sure enough, when I got on the plane, they immediately closed the door behind me and got ready to depart. <clears throat> I took, sat down, took a seat, uh, got myself sorted away, never thought anything more about it, took out a book and read for most of the trip. Got into Montreal and uh, picked up my bags, got a cab down to the uh, hotel, got checked into the hotel, and when I got up to the counter, to check-in counter, I was informed that there was a message there for me. And so when I got up to my room, and the message was for me to call my office. Uh, so when I got up to my room, I called the office and I talked to my co-worker, Grant who immediately began to have me on. And he said, uh, Joel, did you forget anything? And I thought about it and I said, no, I, I got everything. I got my computer, I got all my notes, my baggage all made it okay, so I'm in good shape. He said, it's, it's, it's pretty big. <laughs> and I'm thinking, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. He said, what did you do with your car? Oh my God. I left my car running in front of the airport and got on the plane and never thought no more about it for the entire trip until I got that call or made that call to my home office. And of course, they towed the car away. 
So when I got back, I had to get a cab in order to go retrieve my car. And I think it cost me 50 or $60 to, uh, to get it out of the pound. So it turned into a very expensive um, faux pas, if you will. But for years, I suppressed that because it was, uh, it was embarrassing to me. But yet, I've used that story several times because I think it conveys a message, a lot of different messages. And the important part is to make the linkage. So I, I will never use the story just for the sake of using the story. I'll always make a linkage to the story and the point that I want to get across so that it has context with my overall message. That's your tip for today. Now go out and make your voice heard.